Welcome to the Maine Bible Study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. We are going to complete the book of Deuteronomy today, reading chapters 26 through 34, which is also going to be the completion of the Torah. Now, in the NASB version of the Bible, this is a genteel Bible. So uh, what will happen next is we're going to be in a section known as the books of history. And next week, we'll begin the book of Joshua. Now, we're reading pretty much um, the, same, the same things in the Tanakh. However, it's going to take a little bit of a turn when we get past the book of Judges. Um, the order will change. Um, the Tanakh, as you know, is the Old Testament. So just so you know that once we get past Judges, uh, we, will, we will be actually going into Samuel in the Tanakh. Ruth is included in the writings. Um, so the Tanakh is comprised of of three sections, the Torah, the Nevim, or the Prophet, the Ketchavim, or the Writings. Now we've got, in the Gentile Bibles, we, we, we've got the Torah, the books of history, then we've got the books of poetry, then the major prophets, and the minor prophets. And that's the difference in the division. They are, they're, there's still you're we're still going to be reading this the same books of of uh, the Old Testament, but they're they're going to be in different orders. So you're going to see when that happens. This week will be also as we're as we're ending the book of Deuteronomy. We're also ending a chapter in in history um, because this is when. Um, Moses will die. The next generation will take off in the book of Joshua. So the, this is the closing of, of a generation, actually, except for Joshua and Caleb, who go on with this second generation into the promised land. So we're going to get started with uh, this week's lesson. And what we'll do, as we do every every week, with the main Bible study, we'll do a recap and kind of recap on Deuteronomy. Um, so we're going to start with chapter 26. Now, again, um, Moses is still alive here, and he is giving his final address to the children of Israel, um, to that generation that is going to move forward and actually see the, the promise fulfilled by Adonai, they're going to actually go into the promised land and and get settled in their land. They're going to have to fight, but actually they're not. Actually, Adonai goes ahead of them and fights for them, as, as, you're, as you're going to see as we read on into the book of Joshua. You're going to see just what Adonai does for his people that he chose to lead. Okay, so chapter 26, the offering of first fruits. Then it shall be when you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance and you possess it and live in it, that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground which you bring in from your land that the Lord your God gives you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to establish his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare this day to the Lord my God that I have entered the land which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. You shall answer and say before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down to Egypt and sojourned there few in number, but there he became a great, mighty, and populous nation. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us and imposed hard labor on us. And we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction. 
and our toil and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with a great terror and with signs and wonders. And he has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now behold, I have brought the first of the produce of the ground which you, O Lord, have given me, and you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you and the Levite and the alien who is among you shall rejoice in all the good which the Lord your God has given you and your household. When you have finished paying all the tithe of your increase in the third year, the year of tithing, then you shall give it to the Levite, to the stranger, to the orphan, and to the widow, that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. You shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed this sacred portion from my house and also have given it to the Levite and the alien, the orphan, and the widow, according to all your commandments, which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed uh, forgotten or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it while mourning, nor have I removed any of it while I was unclean, nor offered to the voice of the Lord my God. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the ground which you have given us, a land flowing with milk and honey, as you swore to our fathers. This day the Lord your God commands you to do these statutes and ordinances. You shall therefore be careful to do them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have today declared the Lord to be your God, and that you would walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments, and his ordinances, and listen to his voice. The Lord has today declared you to be his people, a treasured possession, as he promised you, and that you should keep all his commandments and that he will set you high above all nations which he has made for praise, fame, and honor, and that you shall be a consecrated people to the Lord your God as he has spoken. Chapter 27, The Curses of Mount Ebal. Then Moses and the elders of Israel charged the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command, command you today. So it shall be on the day when you cross the Jordan to the land which the Lord your God gives you, that you shall set up for yourself large stones and coat them with lime, and write on them all the words of this law when you cross over, so that you may enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. So it shall be when you cross the Jordan, you shall set up on Mount Ebal these stones, as I am commanding you today, and you shall coat them with lime. Moreover, you shall build there an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall not wield an iron tool on them. You shall build the altar of the Lord your God of uncut stones, and you shall offer on, on it burnt offerings to the Lord your God, and you shall sacrifice peace, of, of peace offerings and eat there and rejoice before the Lord your God. You shall write on the stones all the words of this law very distinctly. Then Moses and the Levitical priests spoke to all Israel, saying, Be silent and listen, O Israel, this day you have become a people for the Lord your God. You shall therefore obey the Lord your God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. Moses also charged the people on that day, saying, When you cross the Jordan, these shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. For the curse, these shall stand on Mount Ebal, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. The Levites shall then answer and say to all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed is the man who makes an idol or a molten image, an, an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and sets it up in secret. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed is he who dishonors his father or mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who moves his neighbor's boundary mark. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who misleads a blind person on the road. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who distorts the justice to an alien orphan. 
and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his father's wife, because he has uncovered his father's skirt, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with any animal, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father, or of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who strikes his neighbor in secret, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who accepts a bribe to strike down an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. And cursed is he who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them, and all the people shall say, Amen. So those were the curses. So now we're going to go to the blessings at Gerizim. Now it shall be if you diligently obey the Lord, your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. This is, this is chapter 28, the blessings. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall, you, shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of, of your ground and the offspring of your beasts, the increase of your herd and the young, young of your flock. Blessed shall your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall, shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come out against you one way and will flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing upon you in your barns and in all that you put your hand to, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself as he swore to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So all the peoples of the earth will see that you are, are called by the name of the Lord, and they will be afraid of you. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity and in the offspring of your body and in the offspring of your, your beast and the produce of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open for you his good storehouse, the heavens to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand and you shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow the lord will make you the head and not the tail and you only will be above and you will not be underneath if you listen to the commandments of the lord your god which i charge you today to observe them carefully and do not turn aside from any of the words which I command you today to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. And as we know, that, that spoiler alert, that's a huge issue for the, the children of Israel. And we'll see that backsliding over and over and over again. Especially when we get into the book of Judges, you're going to see it right from the get-go, how many times they backslide. And, and then Adonai raises up a judge, raises someone up to help deliver them from their captivity, which he had given them over to because they were doing these very things that he told them not to do right here. They had, they had forgotten or chose to mix and mingle with the world, which is certainly, you know, certainly something for us to look at because through Yeshua, we are made righteous and we're to be set apart and to be holy to the Lord. So we need to be careful how we interact with the world and not become part of the world system because we're not part of the world. We're in the world, but not of it. We're actually kingdom kids. So we need to be good ambassadors for the kingdom, bringing the kingdom to earth. Um, amen. Amen. Consequences of disobedience. But it shall come about if you do not obey the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes with which I charge you today that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. So again, so it's going to be the, the complete opposite of the blessings. 
Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall you be shall your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall you shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground, the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Cursed shall, shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send upon you curses, confusion, and rebuke in all you undertake to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the pestilence cling to you until he has consumed you from the land where, where you are entering to possess it. The Lord will smite you with consumption and with fever and with inflammation, with fiery heat and with the sword and with the blight and the mildew, and they will pursue you until you perish. The heaven which is over your head shall be bronze and the earth which is under you iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land powder and dust. From heaven it shall come down on you until you are destroyed. The Lord shall cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You will go out one way against them, but you will flee seven ways before them. And you will be an example of terror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Now you can see this is the direct opposite of the first half of this chapter. Your carcasses will be food to all the birds of the sky and to the beasts of the earth, and there will be no one to frighten them away. The Lord will smite you with the boils of Egypt and with the tumors and with the scab and with the, the itch from which you cannot be healed. The Lord will smite you with madness and with blindness and with bewilderness of heart. And you will grope at noon at the, as the blind man gropes in darkness, and you will not prosper in your ways, but you shall only be oppressed and robbed continually with none to save you. You shall betroth a wife, but another man will violate her. You shall build a house, but you will not live in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you will not use its fruit. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will not eat of it. Your donkey shall be torn away from you and will not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies and, not, and you will have none to save you. Your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people while your eyes look on and yearn for them continually, but there will be nothing you can do. A people whom you do not know shall eat up the produce of your ground and all your labors, and you will never be anything but oppressed and crushed continually. You shall be driven mad by this sight of what you see. The Lord will strike you on the knees and legs with sore boils from which you cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the crown of your head. The Lord will bring you and your king, whom you set over you, to a nation, which neither you nor your fathers have known, and there you, will, you shall serve other gods, wood and stone. This is also very prophetic, because we know that um, the northern kingdom of Israel, which is later down the line, is carried off to Assyria. Those are the ten tribes that get scattered throughout the earth. And then we have this southern kingdom of Judah, gets carried off to Babylon and that that southern kingdom was just Judah and Benjamin so um, this is very prophetic what he is saying what will happen and as as I said um, as you'll see all the backsliding that goes on and God sends after you know there, there's also prophets that are sent to the people and during the days of, of the judges you're going to see the people backsliding, returning, repenting, uh, and turning back to God. And then in the days of the kings, you're going to see many prophets being sent to the people to warn them. And they were not very nice to the prophets. And, and you know, fast forward to the Kedashah, to the New, New Testament, um, Yeshua actually addresses um, the Sanhedrin council, basically the Sanhedrin, members of the Sanhedrin, I should say, the Sadducees and the Pharisees by telling them, you know, you many prophets were sent to you and you killed the prophets, <laughs> which they did. I mean, they martyred many of the prophets. Isaiah was, was a very powerful prophet um, that prophesied both the first and the second coming of Messiah, also gave warnings of the downfall of Israel, and they killed him. So, yeah, the, and and 
that was what Yeshua was referring to. Um, you shall become a horror, a proverb, a taunt among all the people where the Lord drives you. You shall bring out much seed to the field, but you will gather in little, for the locust, the locust will consume it. You shall plant and cultivate vineyards, but you will neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm will devour them. You shall have olive trees throughout your territory, but you will not anoint yourself with the oil, for your olives will drop off. You shall have sons and daughters, but they will not be yours, for they will go into captivity. The cricket shall possess all your trees and the produce of your ground. The alien who is among you shall rise above you higher and higher, but you will go down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, but you will not lend to him. He shall be the head and you will be the tail. So all these curses shall come on you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you would not obey the Lord your God by keeping his commandments and his statutes which he, which he commanded you. They shall become a sign and a wonder on you and your descendants forever because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and a glad heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in, in hunger in thirst and in nakedness and in the lack of all the all things and he will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you the lord will bring a nation against you from afar from the ends of the earth as the eagle swoops down a nation whose language you shall not understand a nation of fierce countenance who will have no respect for the old nor show favor to the young moreover it shall eat the offspring of your herd and the produce of your ground until you are destroyed who also leaves you no grain new new wine or oil nor the increase of your herd or the young of your flock until they have caused you to perish it shall besiege you in all your towns until your high and fortified walls in which you trusted come down throughout your land and it shall besiege you in all your towns throughout your land which the lord your god has given you then you shall eat the offspring of your own body the flesh of your sons and of your daughters whom the lord your god has given you during the siege and the distress by which your enemy will oppress you the men Uh, I'm sorry, the man who is refined and very delicate among you shall be hostile toward his brother and toward the, the wife he cherishes and toward the rest of his children who remain so that he will not give even one of them any of the flesh of his children who, which he will eat since he has nothing else left during the siege and the distress by which your enemy will oppress you in all your towns. The refined and delicate woman among you who would not venture to set the sole of her foot on the ground for, for delicateness and refinement shall be hostile towards the husband she cherishes and, and towards her son and daughter and toward her afterbirth which issues from between her legs and towards her children whom she bears for she will eat them secretly for lack of anything else during the siege and the distress by which your enemy will oppress you in your towns. Now, Jeremiah writes about uh, some of this that, that does definitely occur um, in the fall of Jerusalem. If you're not careful to observe all the words of this law, which are written in this book, to fear this honored and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring extraordinary plagues on you and your descendants, even severe and lasting plagues and miserable and chronic sicknesses. He will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt, of which you were afraid and, and they will cling to you also every sickness and every plague which not written in the book of this of this law the lord will bring on you until you are destroyed then you shall be left few in number whereas you were as numerous as the stars of heaven because you did not obey the lord your god it shall come about that as the lord delighted over you to prosper you and multiply you so the lord will delight over you to make you perish and just and destroy you and you will be torn from the land where you are entering to possess it 
Moreover, the Lord will scatter you among all peoples from one, one end of the earth to the other end of the earth, and there you shall serve other gods, wood and stone, which you or your fathers have not known. Among those nations you shall find no rest, and there will be no resting place for the sole of your foot. But there the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing of eyes, and despair of soul. So your life shall hang in doubt before you, and you will be in dread night and day, and shall have no assurance of your life. In the morning you shall say, would that it were evening, and at evening you shall say, would that it were morning, because of the dread of your heart, which you dread, and for the sight of your eyes, which you will see. The Lord will bring you back to Egypt in ships by the way about which I spoke to you. You will never see it again. And there will, there you will offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer. Chapter 29, the covenant in Moab. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the sons of Israel in the land of Moab, besides the covenant which he had made with them at Horeb. And Moses summoned all, all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and all his servants and all his land. The great trials which your eyes have seen, those great signs and wonders, yet to this day the Lord has not given you a heart to know, nor eyes to see, nor ears to hear. I have led you forty years in the wilderness, your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals not worn out on your foot. You have not eaten bread, nor have you drunk wine or strong drink in order that you might know that I am the Lord your God. When you reach this place, Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out to meet us for battle, but we defeated them. And we took their land and gave it as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of the Manassites. So keep the words of this covenant to do them, that you may possess, that you may prosper in all that you do. You stand today, all of you, before the Lord your God, your chiefs, your tribes, your elders, and your officers, even all the men of Israel your little ones, your wives, and the alien who is within your camps. From the one who chops your wood to the one who draws your water, that you may enter into the covenant with the Lord your God and into his oath, which the Lord your God is making with you today, in order that he may establish you today as his people and that he may be your God, just as he spoke to you and as he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now. Not with you, you alone am I making this covenant and this oath, but both with those who stand here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God and with those who are not with us here today. For you know how we lived in the land of Egypt and how we came through the midst of the nations through which you pass. Moreover, you have seen their abominations and their idols of wood, stone, silver, gold, which they had with them so that there will not be among you a man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of those nations, that there will not be among you a root bearing poisonous fruit and wormwood. It shall be when he hears the words of this verse that he will boast, saying, I have peace, though I walk in, in the stubbornness of my heart in order to destroy the watered land with the dry. The Lord shall never be willing to forgive him, but rather the anger of the Lord and his jealousy will burn against that man, and every curse which is written in this book will rest on him, and the Lord will blot out his name from under heaven. Then the Lord will single him out for adversity from all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant which are written in this book of the law. Now the gener generation to come, your sons, who rise up after you, and the foreigner who comes from a distant land, when they see the plagues of the land and the diseases which, with which the Lord has afflicted it, will say, All its land is brimstone and salt, a burning waste. 
unsown and unproductive, and no grass grows in it, like the, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. All the nations will say, why has the Lord done thus to the land? Why this great outburst of anger? Then men will say, because they forsook the covenant of the Lord, the God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. They went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they have not known and whom he had not allotted to them. Therefore the anger of the Lord burned against that land to bring upon it every curse which is written in this book. And the Lord uprooted them from their land in anger and in fury and in great wrath and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed the load to us and to our sons forever that we may observe all the words of this law. Chapter 30, Restoration Promised. So it shall be when all of these things have come upon you, the, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind in all nations where the Lord your God has banished you, and you return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart and soul according to all that I command you today, you and your sons and the Lord your God will restore you from captivity and have compassion on you and will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. So even so, there's even, even with these curses, you can see God is merciful and wanting to restore the people, even though he, they, he knows they're going to mess up, which they do. He is always ready to extend that mercy to them. He loves them. If your outcasts are at the ends of the earth, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will bring you back. The Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and he will prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. Moreover, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, so that you may live. The Lord your God will inflict all these curses on your enemies and, and on those who hate you, who persecuted you. And you shall again obey the Lord and observe all his commandments which I command you today. Then the Lord your God will prosper you abundantly in all the work of your hand and in the offspring of your body and in the offspring of your cattle and then in the produce of your ground. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good, just as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you obey the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, for this commandment, which I command you today, is not too difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to the heaven for us to get it for us, and make us hear it, that we may observe it. Nor is it be beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea for us to get it for us, and make us hear it, that we may observe it. But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may observe it. Choose life. See, I set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you that I have set before you life and death, the blessings and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, 
you and your descendants by loving the, the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him. For this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Now, this is an interesting segment to choose life, um, and actually a, a very um, powerful foreshadow to Yeshua, because Yeshua died for each and every one of us so that we may have life and have it more abundantly and that we could also, you know, we could have eternal life. But it's a decision. And 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 we either choose life or, or death. Because the wages of sin are death, and sin cannot stand before a holy God. So when, when we're looking at this, we indeed, we're all today choosing life or death because uh, in eternity, that's that's we're going to go one way or the other. There's no in between. Um, there there will be some religions that want you to believe that there's a a place called purgatory, which it, it absolutely does not exist. You're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. Um, you're going to either be with the Lord or you're going to be separated from Him. And to be separated from Him is spiritual death. You do not want to find yourself in that condition. But again, the Lord gives us a, a choice, that free will. So this is the free will that these people are having. And this is the foreshadow. This is the physical choice that they're making. We're talking about promised land. Our promised land, of course, is heaven in eternity with the Lord, you know, ruling and reigning with, with King Yeshua. So, But this is their physical promised land that was promised to them. So this is definitely, we can look at this as a foreshadow. Uh, and they need to choose. Are they going to listen to God? They're going to keep his commandments? Or are they going to go by the way of the world and, and, and just do their own thing and not listen to the Lord? So um, I just wanted to bring that little nugget out there as far as this being a really strong foreshadow of, of what will later come when Yeshua is in the picture here. And we will we will actually get into into the altar call a little bit later and give you that opportunity to give your life to the Lord if you haven't already. Chapter 31, Moses' last counsel. So Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I'm 120 years old today. I'm no longer able to come and go. And the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross this Jordan. It is the Lord your God who will cross ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua is the one who will cross ahead of you, just as the Lord has spoken. The Lord will do to them just as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. The Lord will deliver them up before you, and you shall do to them according to all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Then Moses called to Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous you shall go with the people into the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall give it to them as an inheritance. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. So Moses wrote this law and gave it to the priests, the, son of, the sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. Then Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, at the time of the year of remission of debts, at the Feast of Booths, the Sukkot, or we also call it the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God at the place which he, he will choose, you shall read this law in front of all Israel in their hearing. Assemble the people, 
the men and the women and the children and the alien who is in your town, so that they may hear and learn and fear the Lord your God and be careful to observe all the words of this law. Their children who have not known will hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live on the land which you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. Israel will fall away. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, the time for you to die is near. Call Joshua and present yourselves at the tent of meeting that I may commission him. So Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves at the tent of meeting. The Lord appeared in the tent in a pillar of cloud, and the pillar of cloud stood at the doorway at the tent. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, you are about to lie down with your fathers, and this people will arise and play the harlot with the strange gods of the land into the midst of which they are going, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I've made with them. Then my anger will be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them and hide my face from them, and they will be consumed, and many evils and troubles will come upon them, so that they will say in that day, is it not because our God is not among us that these evils have come upon us? But I will surely hide my face in that day because of all the evil which they will do, for they will turn to other gods. Now therefore write this song for yourselves and teach it to the sons of Israel. Put it on their lips so that they, this song may be a witness for me against the sons of Israel. For when I bring them into the land flowing with milk and honey, which I swore to their fathers, and they have eaten and are satisfied and become prosperous, then they will turn to other gods and serve them and spurn me and break my covenant. Then it shall come about, for many evils and troubles have come upon them, that this song will testify before them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten from the lips of their descendants, for I know their intent, which they are developing today, because I brought them into the land which I swore. So Moses wrote this song, the same day and taught it to the sons of Israel. Joshua is commissioned. Then he commissioned Joshua, the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous. And there's a word, chazak, which means to be courageous. For you shall bring the sons of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. It came about when Moses finished writing the words of this law in, in a book, until they were complete, that Moses commanded the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may remain there as a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stubbornness. Behold, while I am still alive with you today, you have been rebellious against the Lord. How much more then after my death? Assemble to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words on their hearing and call the heavens and the earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death you will act corruptly and turn from the way which I have commanded you and evil will befall you in the latter days. For you will do that which is evil in the sight of the Lord provoking him to anger with the work of your hands. When Moses spoke in the hearing of the assembly of Israel the words of this song until they were complete. Chapter 32, the Song of Moses. Give ear, O heavens, and let me speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as the droplets on fresh grass, and as the showers on the herb. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect. For all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. They have acted corruptly toward him. They are not his children because of their, their defect, but are a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus repay the Lord, O foolish foolish and unwise people. Is not he your father who has brought you? 
He has made you and established you. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of all generations. Ask your father, and he will inform you, your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of man, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the sons of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the allotment of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, and in the howling waste of a wilderness, he encircled him, he cared for him, he guarded him as the people of his eye. That's where the, the, apple, of his, uh, the apple of his eye comes in. Israel is the apple of God's eye. That's where that statement comes from. And that's what it means, actually. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that hovers over its young, he spread his wings and caught them. He carried them on his pinions. The Lord alone guided him, and there was no foreign God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, and he ate the produce of the field. And he made him suck honey from the rock, and oil from the flinty rock, curds of cows and, and milk of flocks, with fat of lambs and, ram, and rams, and the breed of Bashan and goats. With the finest of the wheat and of the blood of grapes, you drank wine. The Jeshurun grew fat and kicked. You are grown fat, thick, and sleek. Then he forsook God, who made him, and scorned the rock of his salvation. They made him jealous with strange gods, with abominations they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons who were not God, to gods whom they have not known. New gods who came lately, whom your fathers did not, did not dread. You neglected the rock who begot you, and forgot the God who gave you birth. The Lord saw this, and spurred them, because of the provocation of his sons and daughters. Then he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a perverse generation, sons in whom is no faithfulness. They have made me jealous with what is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their idols. So I will make them jealous with those who are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For fire is kindled in my anger and burns to the lowest part of Sheol and consumes the earth with its yield and sets on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heat misfortunes on them. I will use my arrows on them. They will be wasted by famine and consumed by plague and bitter destruction and the teeth of beasts I will send upon them with the venom of crawling things of the dust. Outside the sword will, will bereave and inside terror both young man and virgin, the, the nursing with the man of gray hair. I would have said, I will cut them to pieces. I will remove the memory of them from men. Had I not feared the provocation by the enemy that their adversaries would misjudge, they would say, our hand is triumphant, and the Lord has not done all this. They are a nation lacking in counsel, and there is no understanding in them. Would that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would discern their future. How could one chase a thousand and put ten thousand to flight unless their rock had sold them, and the Lord had given them up? Indeed, their rock is not like our rock. Even our enemies themselves judge this, for their vine is from the vine of Sodom, and from the fields of Gomorrah their grapes are grapes of poison, their clusters bitter, their wine is the venom of serpents, and the deadly poison of cobras. Is it not laid up in store with me, sealed up in my treasuries? Vengeance is mine and retribution. In due time, their foot will slip, for the day of their calamity is near, and the impending things are hastening upon them. For the Lord will vindicate his people and will have compassion on his servants when he sees that their strength is gone and there is none remaining bond or free. And he will say, Where are their gods, the rock in which they sought refuge? Who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering? Let them rise up and help you. 
Let them be your hiding place. See now that I, I am he, and there is no God beside me. It is I who put to death in and gave, give life. I am wounded, and it is I who heal, and there is no one who can deliver from my hand. Indeed, I lift up my hand to heaven and say as I live forever, if I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand takes hold on justice, I will render vengeance on my adversaries, and I will repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood, and my sword will devour flesh with the blood of the slain and, and the captives. When the long-haired leaders of the enemy rejoice, O nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance on his adversaries, and will atone for his land and his people. Then Moses came and spoke all the words of this song in the hearing of the people, he with Joshua, the son of Nun. When Moses had finished speaking all these words to Israel, he said to them, Take to your heart all the words which I am warning you today, which you shall command your sons to observe carefully even all the words of this law. For it is not an idle word for you. Indeed, it is not. It, indeed, it is your life. And by this word, you will prolong your days in the land which you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. The Lord spoke to Moses that very same day, saying, Go up to this mountain at the Abram, Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, opposite Jericho, and look at the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the sons of Israel for a possession. Then die on the mountain, where you ascend and be gathered to your people, as Aaron, your brother, died on Mount Hor, and was gathered to his people. Because you broke faith with me, in the midst of the sons of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because you did not treat me as holy in the midst of the sons of Israel. For you shall see the land at a distance, but you shall not go there into the land which I am giving the sons of Israel. Chapter 33, the blessing of Moses. Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the, the man of God, blessed the sons of Israel before his death. He said, the Lord came from Sinai and dawned on them from there. He shone forth from Mount Paran, and he came from the midst of, the, of ten thousand holy ones. At his right hand there was flashing lightning for them. Indeed, he loves the people. All your holy ones are in your hand, and they followed in your steps. Everyone receives of your words. Moses charged us with the law, a possession for the assembly of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun, and when the heads of the people were gathered, the tribes of Israel together, may Reuben live and not die, nor his men be few. And this regarding Judah, so he said, Hear, O Israel, the voice of Judah, and bring him to his people. With his hands he contended for them, and may you be a help against his adversaries. Of Levi he said, Let your Thummim and your Urim Bring to your godly, bring to your godly man, whom you proved at Massa, with whom you contended at the waters of Meribah, who said of his father and his mother, I did not consider them, and he did not acknowledge his brothers, nor did he regard his own sons, for they observed your word and kept your covenant. They shall teach your ordinances to Jacob and your law to Israel. They shall put incense before you and whole burnt offerings on your altar. The Lord bless his substance and accept the work of his hands. Shatter the loins of those who rise up against him and those who hate him so that they will not rise again. O Benjamin, he said, may the, the beloved of the Lord dwell in, this, in security by him who shields him all day and he dwells between his shoulders. Of Joseph, he said, blessed of the Lord, he has land with the choice things of heaven with the dew and from the sheep lying beneath and with the choice yield of the sun and with the choice produce of the month and with the best things of the ancient mountains and with the choice things of the everlasting hills and with the choice things of the earth and its fullness and the favor of him who dwelt in the bush. Let it come to the head of Joseph and to the crown of the head of the one distinguished among his brothers.
as, as the firstborn of his ox, majesty is his, and his horns are the horns of the wild ox. With them he will push the peoples all at once to the ends of the earth. And those of the ten thousands of Ephraim, and those of the thousands of Manasseh, of Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going forth, and Issachar in your, in your tents. They will call peoples to the mountains. They will offer righteous sacrifices, for they will draw out the abundant, the abundance of the sea and the hidden treasures of the sand. Of Gad, he said, Blessed is the one who enlarges Gad. He lies down as a lion and tears the arm also, the crown of the head. Then he provided the first part for himself, for there the ruler's portion was reserved and he came with the leaders of the people he executed the judgment of the lord and his ordinances with israel of dan he said dan is a lion's whelp that leaps forth from bashan of naphtali he said o naphtali satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the lord take possession of the sea and the south of asher he said more blessed than the sons is asher may he be favored by his brothers and may he dip his foot in oil your locks will be iron and bronze, and according to your days, so will your leisurely walk be. There is none like the God of Jeshurun, who rides the heavens to your help. And through the skies in his majesty, the eternal God is a dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he drove out the enemy from before you and said, Destroy. So Israel dwells in security the fountain of jacob secluded in a land of grain and new wine his heavens also drop down dew blessed are you o israel who is like you o people saved by the lord who is the shield of your help and the sword of your majesty so your enemies will cringe before you and you will tread upon their high places chapter 34 now up until this point, Moses has has written everything from Genesis to the end of chapter 33. However, Moses did not write chapter 34, and you're going to see why. Um, and actually, it is felt that Joshua was the author of this final chapter of the Torah, final chapter of Deuteronomy, because chapter 34 is the death of Moses. Now Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead, as far as Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, and the, and the Negev, and the plain, and the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no man knows his burial place to this day. Although Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye, his eye was not dim, nor his vigor abated. So physically, he was, he was still in, in good shape at 120 years old, in other words. So the sons of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses came to an end. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands on him, and the sons of Israel listened to him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. So that mantle had been passed on to Joshua. Since that time, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. For all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent, to him, sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh, all his servants and all his land, and for all mighty power and for for all the great terror which moses performed in the sight of all israel 
And that is the end of our reading. We're going to go on to recap on this. Now, once again, to recap the time frame of the book of Deuteronomy, it was 1450 to 1400 BC. And we know, again, Deuteronomy was also written by the book of this book, except for chapter 34, was written by Moses during the wilderness wanderings. This is the final book of Moses, the final book of the Torah. And um, actually, the theme of the book is obedience bring, brings blessings, while disobedience brings curses. And we certainly read that very crystal clear. Deuteronomy, again, is the record of Moses' farewell address to Israel, which was given around 1450 to 1400 BC on the plains of Moab on the eve of the entry of our ancestors going into the promised land. And the title of this book comes from the Greek translation, um, and the Greek translation was the Septuagint. Um, the title implies a second giving of the law. When we, we, we break the word Deuteronomy up, Deuter, D-E-U-T-E-R, it means second. Well, anomy refers to law. So yes, it is. It, it was definitely the second giving of the law. And we definitely heard it repeated. But this was the second generation. Remember, the first generation had died out in the wilderness because of their lack of faith. Remember when the 12 spies went into the promised land, 10 of them came back with the bad report. And they actually believed that over what God had promised them. They lost that faith vision. They didn't listen to the minority who really believed in God and, and didn't lose that faith vision. And that was Joshua and Caleb. They, they, were, they were ready to go because they believed in what God had, had told them and knew that they could count on God, but um, they listened to the majority report. And See, we can look at that in our world today. How how often do people fall in, fall to fear and not trust in the Lord because of what the majority is is saying? Look at the you know the, the majority of the people are following our bad news and getting false reports. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Trust the Lord. The Lord cannot lie. The Lord the Lord will not lie to you. Uh, the Lord is holy. Lying is sin, so the Lord is not going to lie to you. Uh, we can trust the Lord. And don't lose faith, even though, you know, we we get so caught up in our timeline uh, and think that the Lord has showed, showed something to us that it has to happen within our limited thinking, our limited time frame. However, the Lord is not on our timeline, so we need to, we need to have faith and, and just walk in that faith and and believe that what he has said, what he has promised will come to fruition because our God does not break promises. Our God does not break covenant. That is something mankind does, but our Lord does not do that. And we can count on him 100%. And we don't need to help God. God doesn't need our help unless he tells us, we need to do something to move forward or you know, whether he's commanding us to do something. But we know that he's already gone ahead of us, just like we see he's going to go ahead of the children of Israel. He's the one. Let him do things in his time frame. If he has said he's going to do something, if he has said he's going to bring something to you, he's going to bless you with something, you can count on that. As, you, as we look back to the story of Sarah, and Haggai, we want to. We don't want to. You know, Sarah was thought she was helping God. On, God on Sarah and Abraham, but it actually messed things up. It messed. It, it actually interfered with God's plan for them because the promised child was not Ishmael. The promised child was Isaac. And if they had just waited for the will of God to come into fruition when it was God's timing and not their timing. 
they would not have gotten into the mess that they got into. Um, so we need to sometimes stay out of our own way um, when God has shown us something just to believe him, to, you know, to, to believe him, stand back, watch him orchestrate what he will orchestrate and, and he will do it beautifully and perfect. So if we interfere, we may not get perfect uh, because we have messed with, with what we shouldn't be messing with. Unless God tells us to do something, we need to stand out of the way and let God do it in his perfect timing. And he has a perfect will and time. He has a perfect will and plan for each of our lives. So um, trust him. He knows what is best. He sees the end from the beginning. So we don't need to question. And we just need to, to, to stay strong in the faith. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. We need to trust him. And this is this is what happened to that first generation. They did not. They got fearful because of what they were being told, the reports of giants in the land, and they thought they were just going to get trampled over and killed as they went into the land. They forgot the God that they were serving and everything that, they, that he had brought them through up to this point. If God brings us to it, he's going to bring us through it. We just need to believe and not lose that faith. Amen? Amen. So um, getting back to the recapping here, Deuteronomy is absolutely a book of transitions. It's a transition to a new generation, to a new possession, to a new experience, and to a new revelation of God's love. The first half of Deuteronomy was looking backward to their history, how they got this far. And now what we have been reading since Deuteronomy chapter 12 to the end was a looking forward to what they, they were going to face ahead. And it was a closing of chapters and, and a beginning and an opening of a new chapter for Israel as well. God brought us out that God might bring us in, which God swore to our fathers. So when God brought us out, we see the power of God. When God brought us in, we saw the grace of God. And the which God swore to our fathers, we see God's faithfulness. And God is faithful and true. So... We saw the blessings. We saw. We read about the blessings that everything that God would bless them with, if they followed His His covenant, His 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 statutes, His law. But we also saw what would happen if they did not. It was the direct opposite. And it the words that Moses was saying too was rather pro prophetic too, and what God was telling Moses because. Uh, he knew, well, again, God can see ahead. He can see the end from the beginning. He knew that they would slip. But God, even though he was going to deal, there was consequences ahead that lied ahead. And we're going to read it as we go through the Bible, the consequences that they go through for backsliding, for, for diso being disobedient to God. Um, he always also showed mercy if they would turn back. As we read, if they turn back, this is what God will, will re do to them to restore them and love them. And he, he will never um, give up on them as a people, in other words, because he does love them. Okay. So just a little bit about Moses the man. In 1440 BC, Moses and the people began the exodus from Egypt. They arrived on the plains of Moab around 1400 BC where Deuteronomy was, was probably no doubt written, that finality. The writing of, of this book took place just before the death of Moses and just before he handed over the leadership of, of the congregation of Israel to Joshua. In addition to a great summary of what God did for his people, this book covers a two-month period that included a month of mourning for Moses as we read at the end Moses died and the people stayed there for 30 days and mourned him. So Moses's life actually 
fell into three periods of 40 years. And they are as, as such. The first 40 years Moses spent as a prince in Egypt. The second 40 years he lived as a fugitive in Midian. Because remember, he killed that Egyptian and then the Pharaoh at that time wanted to kill him. So he fled and he lived in Midian. And then he came back when, when, when he had that encounter with the burning bush and, and God gave him his calling. The last 40 years, the, the third 40 years as the leader of God's people from Egypt to the promised land, to that right before they were going to cross over. Moses was 120 years old. And the promised land stood ready for the people to occupy. All they had to do was cross the Jordan River. God had brought the people safely out of slavery, out of bondage in Egypt, and led them to Mount Sinai, where he gave them the law. Because Israel disobeyed God and refused to possess the land after Joshua and Caleb brought back a positive report from their spying mission, and listened to the false report of the, of the majority of the, the other ten, God caused the people to wander for 38 more years in the wilderness. During this time, the rebellious and unbelieving generation died in the wilderness. So camped on the eastern border of Canaan, the Israelites prepared to enter into the promised land. Here they faced new obstacles and new, new foes, as well as new leadership and new temptations. It was in this setting that Moses called the people together to remind them of the Lord's faithfulness and to challenge them to be faithful and obedient to God as they possess the promised land. Deuteronomy is a series of farewell addresses by Moses to Israel as he prepared to die and as they made ready to enter into the promised land. Even though God had forbidden Moses to enter into the promised land, Moses felt a strong sense of anticipation as the people awaited the time to start the journey into the land of the promise. What God had promised Abraham, Isaac, what God had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was about to, to come true. Deuteronomy is a proclamation of a second chance for Israel, whose disloyalty and lack of faith had prevented the conquest of Canaan earlier. The majority of the people with Moses at the doorway to the promised land had not witnessed the Exodus or the scenes at Mount Sinai. They had been born in the wilderness. Thus, Moses exhorted them 35 times to go in and possess the land. On 34 different occasions, Moses reminded them that this was the land that God had promised them. The book of Deuteronomy reminded the people that the Holy Spirit had been with them from the time of their deliverance from Egypt to the present time, and that he would continue to guide and protect them if only they would obey the stipulations of the covenant. We can all learn a lesson from this. The Holy Spirit will continue to guide and protect us also, as, and we are expected to, to keep covenant with God as well. Um, several of Moses' most famous prophecies were spoken in Deuteronomy as Moses was guided by the Holy Spirit. Among these prophecies were the coming of the Messiah, which was in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, and the dispersion of Israel in chapter 30, verse 1, Israel's repentance, chapter 30, verse 2, Israel's restoration, chapter 30, verse 5, and Israel's future national restoration and conversion, also in chapter 30, verse 5 to 6 and Israel's national prosperity in chapter 30, verse 9. Moses was 120 years old when he died, and he is the only person that God, it is stated in the Bible, that God himself buried. Now there's thoughts on, on why God buried him, because the people would have probably <laughs> taken clothing from, from Moses, and who knows what would have ensued with all of that. and. Um, so no one knows where Moses was buried. There's also thoughts that possibly Moses might have also been raptured, um, but that is not what is stated in the Bible. 
and and that 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 was that was also conjectured because of the two witnesses of and Moses possibly being one of the two witnesses because no one was there but God when Moses was gathered to his fathers so there is there is there has been some speculation as to who the two witnesses will be in the book of Revelation because that is yet to come and there's some that think that it is Elijah who did not die and he was raptured Elijah and Moses uh, because um, Yeshua, when he actually, I'm going to go forward to um, actually Luke chapter 9. When Peter, John, and James went up on the mountain to pray with, with Yeshua. And while he was, while he was praying, uh, while Yeshua was praying, the appearance of his face became different. And his clothing became white and gleaming. Now Moses had that uh, glistening and that that glow uh, when he returned from the second time that he um, got the Ten Commandments on the second set of tablets and spent forty days and forty nights with the Lord in him in, in glory. But here, um, my my point with the the transfiguration here uh, on the mountain here. There were two men were talking with him, and they were both Moses and Elijah. So this is where the thought is that um, the two witnesses might be them. But then there's others that say that Enoch also was was translated and uh, raptured up, so it could possibly be Enoch. But we definitely have Elijah, as um, everybody agrees on Elijah. And because of the things that were done, um, and what will be done in the book of Revelation? All of the plagues, um, you know, are related to Moses's time, uh, and we will, you know, the, that is also mentioned in the book of Revelation. And also, the the, the shutting up of the of the rain, uh, and the you know the drought, the the famine, and everything was in Elijah's time. So that is what the thought is with that. But anyway, that's just a little extra for you. Um, that is the end of our Bible study. We're going to close with prayer and then we're going to open our altar call and then close out the Bible study for this week. Father God, we just want to thank you. Thank you for this powerful word. We want to thank you that you are a merciful and loving God. Even though, you know, we all slip up, you are still there to pick us up because you love humanity. You love your creation. We just love and adore you, and we look to you for everything, as we should. We know that you will never leave us. You will never forsake us, and we can count on you. We can count on you 100%. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing presently, and all that you're about to do. Keep us strong. Keep us close to you. Give us fresh anointing daily refreshment that we can be your hands and feet on this planet and be about your business and not distracted with the world. Thank you for everything. We give you all of our praises and all honor and glory belong to you. And we pray this prayer in the name above all names, the mightiest name of all, the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ. His name in Hebrew is Yeshua, and it means salvation. And salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. And we've already said sin cannot stand before a holy God. The wages of sin are death. That is the consequences being separated from God. And we don't want to be in that condition. We want to be with God. God is our creator. God is, we are actually spiritually wired to seek him. Even though people that, people that are, are mocking and stopping and, and actually saying that they're atheists, they don't believe in God. I have news for them. They're spiritually wired to seek him. So instead they seek other spiritual aspects and they get all caught up into wrong spiritual things and actually get into demonic spiritual entities 
because they're seeking. But what they're seeking for is God, the creator who created them in his image and loves them. So, um, yes, we are spiritual beings. Yes, we are wired and connected to God. And woe to those who reject uh, and will be separated. That is a very sad day. And God loves humanity so much that he's not willing that any, any, any should perish. That all should come to the truth and the knowledge of Yeshua, who is the one that died for all of our sins. Yeshua took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross willingly so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could be reconciled to the Father. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, everyone, because of that original sin in the Garden of Eden. We were all born into that. We we're all born into through the line of Adam. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 said, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. Yeshua was not born in the line of Adam, even though the genealogy, some of the genealogy shows and traces back to Adam. He actually was not. He was born of a virgin. He was born through Mary. And the, and the Holy Spirit breathed into her. The Ruach HaKadosh breathed into her. He is second of the Godhead. He emptied himself of his divinity so he could be born as a human being to reverse the curse. Because a human being, the first Adam, the first, through, through the first Adam, the curse came. And so this is why he came as the son of man to reverse that curse as a human being but he had to fit a certain criteria and the whole foreshadow of the animal sacrifices um, kind of depict that those animals um, that were sacrificed to cover the sins of the people they had to be perfect animals they had to be the the top choice the finest offering that you could give to the lord they could not be lame there could be nothing imperfect about them so we fast forward to Yeshua, who was the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. He was perfect in every way. The only human being that we can truly say was perfect, blemish-free, spotless, sin-free. He's the only one that could actually pay our sin debt in full. He's the only one that could take it all away for us because we could never do it ourselves because we were born into sin. So we could never, you could never earn your way to heaven. It just would never happen. So Yeshua did it for us. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. And the Father's response to everything that had happened in the Garden of Eden and up to this point, to the point of Yeshua, you know, he loved humanity. He had this plan in motion right from the beginning, when that original sin occurred. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. And the original, actually the original plan, as I was mentioning, and I was kind of hedging on here um what actually we can go right to it we can go to genesis chapter 3 verse 15 and between your now this is from the tanakh and and between your offspring and hers i i will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers they shall strike at your head and you shall strike at their heel. Well, Yeshua was crucified at a place called Golgotha, and it's the place of the skull. So when you think about where his heel would have been, at, you know, the place of the skull on top of that uh, area where, where they crucified him, he fulfilled that prophecy right there. 
and that was early pro pro prophecy at the very beginning because these were the first two human beings that were ever created by God. So um, it was already prophesied that that would happen, and it and and Yeshua fulfilled everything. He fulfilled everything of his first coming, and I can guarantee you, he will fulfill everything of his second coming that has been prophesied in Isaiah and many of the the Old Testament prophets have already, you know, spoken of his second coming. So he is returning and he is returning as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to rule and reign. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Even the devil will have to bow to King Yeshua. So how do we get to heaven? First John chapter one, verse nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We need to turn from them. We need to confess them to the Lord. He's already paid our sin debt in full. And he is so waiting with open arms for you to come to him and confess to him. And he will forgive you. All you need to do is call in the name of Jesus. And no, you haven't fallen so far that he, he won't save you. He died for every sin. And he died for every person. You don't have to wait to clean your act up. Because that will all come once you have, have accepted the Lord as your Savior. And, and you've been forgiven. He will start to... The, the Holy Spirit will work with you on things that you should be doing and not doing. But you have to also be willing and open. So if you've never accepted Jesus, Yeshua, as your Lord and Savior, you can say this simple prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I am a sinner. I need a Savior and I understand I can't save myself. I do understand it's already been done for me. Jesus, Yeshua, died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. Yeshua, I, I, I'm asking you for forgiveness. I want to turn my life around and not continue on the path that I am, but to, to, to turn from and do what it is that you want me to do. And I'm asking your forgiveness for any sin that I've ever done. I thank you for paying my sin debt in full with your life. I accept the gift of salvation and eternal life. And I do believe you are the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I declare you as my Lord and Savior from this moment on. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all of your ways for the rest of my life. I also believe by your wounds I am healed. I can never repay you, Yeshua, for everything that you've done for me. I can only be eternally grateful and try to do the best that I can. And I thank you. And I believe that through you and you alone, Yeshua, that I am saved. I am born again, set free and delivered from sin and the consequences of sin. And I am now healthy of mind, body, and soul. And I pray this prayer in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. If you have said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. You are now a child of God. You're born again, and you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. And, and you were born again, and God has written his name on you. God, the God of creation, has written his name on you. You are his child. You belong to him now, and he has sealed you with his Holy Spirit. How awesome is that? I'm going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church in the mess or, or a Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible and not doctrines of the world and ideas of men, traditions of men, other religions. As you read, this is not something that we should be mixing with as people of God. We need to stick to the word of God. I'm going to encourage you to get a Bible, 
a hard copy of the Bible so that you can read it. I'm going to encourage you to get into uh, Bible studies at the, at the local congregation that you may join. You can certainly continue to partake of this one and all, any of the other ones that we have online that are completed, as well as our additional Bible studies. You're, you're more than welcome to partake from them. You can never get enough of the Word of God, and each time you read it, uh, you can get new revelation because it is a living Word from a living God. I'm going to encourage you to develop a prayer life. Find a quiet place where you can pray to God. Develop that relationship with Him. He is your Heavenly Father, whereby you can refer to Him as Abba, Father, directly. You can directly go to Him. He is there for you 24-7. He is a God that never slumbers nor sleeps. He loves you. He loves you so much that He gave His only you got the son to die for you so that you could be with them. And you're now part of a whole family of God that is, you've got brothers and sisters across this planet that are born again and saved. So welcome to the family of God. So I'm gonna, we're going to close this with the Aaronic blessing. It's also known as the priestly blessing. It is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. This is when the Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and, and his sons. Now, Aaron was the high priest at that time when this, uh, that when this was stated. And his sons were also the Levite priests that, that ministered to the, the children of Israel. God wanted to bless the children of Israel. And he, he wanted to write his name on them. They belong, They were his chosen nation and he loved them and he gave specific words that were to be spoken over them as a blessing now you who are born again into the family of god you're part of that commonwealth of israel now as well you're if you're a gentile you're grafted in if 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 you're 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 now a jewish believer a messianic jewish believer you're also put back into that natural olive tree so and the gentiles are the grafted in so but we're all part of one family of god jew and gentile and one body of messiah so this blessing is for all in hebrew it goes like this the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. It is still early enough in the week to say Shavuot Tov. Um, the other Bible studies coming up in this upcoming week, of course, are um, the Tanakh, which we will be reading the same passages yet from the Tanakh. And also we are going to be reading from the book of Acts, chapters 1 through 14 of the Passion Translation. So that is up and coming Tuesday evening. We, we will be meeting live in real time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on freeconferencecall.com. And Wednesday evening, I will be posting the Rosh Kadesh services. It's hard to believe that we're coming. Again, uh, we're approaching the new moon and we are also approaching a new hebrew calendar month of ayar and that's i y a r so um we will be having services and holy communion so we've had a lot of holy communions kind of close together it's just where everything is falling right now in between um, passover being at the end of april and now uh, we've got you know the first shabbat of of May, we ha always have uh, Holy Communion, and then Rosh Kadesh is, is this week as well. So, yeah, it, there's a lot of communion here close together. So, but that's what's happening for this week. And that is really all I have to say. God bless each and every one of you. And once again, Shavuot Tov. Have a good week.